So back in January, we took a one week trip to Austria and Hallstatt was probably the town that I was most excited to visit. Um, there's a really famous viewpoint that's uh, literally called the postcard spot because it looks like it's straight out of a painting. Um, it's absolutely breathtaking and uh, I'd say no matter when you go during the year, um, you're always going to find crowds and crowds of people. We technically went I guess in the middle of winter, so I'd say relatively it was less crowded. Um, but no matter when you go, uh, you're definitely going to want to get there early. So we visited Hallstatt as um, a day trip from Salzburg. Uh, so I thought a day trip actually gave us just the right amount of time to um, explore the town. Uh, I do know a lot of people choose to stay in town overnight, um, but I personally found that the hotel options in Hallstatt um, are much more limited and uh, also pricier as a result. Um, and it's also not a very car friendly town, so um, be prepared to lug your suitcase to the hotel from the ferry um, if you do plan to stay overnight. Uh, we also didn't rent a car, so we relied on the train system, which I'll talk through in a bit, but it actually ended up being much easier to figure out than we anticipated. Um, but uh, I'll talk you through what you need to know, assuming you are taking the train, but they do have parking lots outside or around the town. So if you're driving, um, that's of course uh, potentially a, a more convenient option. Um, and then I will also talk through some highlights that I think are worth visiting once you get into uh, the Hallstatt town itself. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So to get from uh, Salzburg to Hallstatt, it's about a two and a half hour trip each way. Um, and the route consists of three legs. So the first leg, you're gonna take the train from Salzburg station to uh, an intermediate train station called Atnang Puchheim. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, but the second leg is uh, also going to be a train route. So you're gonna take the train from uh, Atnang Puchheim to Hallstatt Station. And then once you get to Hallstatt Station, you have to take a ferry. It's a very quick ferry ride, but you have to take it from the Hallstatt train station into the town itself, which is across the, uh, the lake. Um, the train routes are run by OBB, which is Austria's uh, national railway service. Um, and the route, uh, the especially the three legs, I'd say it looks more intimidating than it actually is. Um, so you can book tickets through the OBB website uh, or through their app, or you can buy tickets at the train station directly. Um, but whatever method you use, you'll definitely want to book tickets uh, in advance, um, especially during peak season. I hear that tickets sometimes sell out. So we bought tickets, I believe, through their website. Um, and it was pretty straightforward. So when you buy the tickets, you plug in your start destination and your end destination. So in our case, it was Salzburg to Hallstatt. And um, it figures out the like intermediate train legs for you, kind of like if you have a layover on a flight. Um, so you don't have to worry about buying tickets for each leg of this trip separately. You buy it all together as part of one um, uh, train trip. Um, and uh, I would also recommend getting in before 9.30 a.m. Uh, if possible to avoid the crowds, make sure you can get those photos without too many people in the background. Um, so I think if you're leaving from Salzburg like we were, uh, the best train options are the 6.11 a.m. train um, or the 7.11 a.m. train. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the transfer at that intermediate train station. It is a pretty tight transfer, I want to say under 10 minutes or so, um, but they will announce which platform you need to go to when you are on the train from Salzburg. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, their train stations are very clearly kind of marked and labeled in terms of which platform, which uh, destinations these trains are going to. Um, so you shouldn't have any problem making the uh, relatively tight transfer. Uh, and depending on when you go, you might also want to pay extra to reserve a specific seat. Uh, it is a pretty long train ride, so ideally you don't have to stand the whole time. Um, yeah, but in terms of, uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, but in terms of cost, 
Um, the tickets, at least when we went, were about 15 euros per person each way. Um, so very comparable to the screenshot that you see here, which I took from their website. Um, I believe the uh, the Spar Sheen tickets are uh, discounted, um, so you won't be able to cancel or exchange them. Uh, so if you want the extra flexibility, sorry, extra flexibility, uh, you can either wait to book until you know for sure when you'll be able to go or you can buy their standard ticket um, which allows you to uh, i guess technically cancel or return um, if something comes up but those tickets are more expensive i think it's around 30 dollars sorry 30 euros per person uh, each way and um, no matter what ticket you book the seat reservations if you want to reserve a specific seat on the train it's an additional um, i think between three to five euros extra per person so uh yeah might be worth it depending on um, what time of day you're going or what uh season you're going um if it's super crowded would highly recommend uh reserving a specific seat so the train ride itself uh was very very pleasant the scenery as you can see here especially towards the end as you are approaching hallstatt station is absolutely gorgeous um I forget which side of the train we were sitting on. I want to say if you are facing in the direction of the train, um, you ideally want to sit on the right side of the train, but don't quote me on that. Uh, that's just um, kind of loosely based on what I remember from uh, this, uh, this past trip that we took. Once you get into Hallstatt, everything is pretty much walkable. Um, so I'll list some of the highlights and uh, I'd recommend plotting these on a map so you can figure out what order you want to visit these in. Um, the, the first highlight I think is the most obvious. It's the uh, classic postcard viewpoint. Um, so on Google Maps, it's called this. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, uh, but it's a short five to seven minute walk from the ferry station. And I'd recommend going here earlier rather than later since this is what people come to Hall Stop for. So the, the crowds will get worse and worse over the course of the day. The second spot that I'd recommend, it's back towards the town center. So this is, uh, I'm listing these all in order of uh, how we kind of went about the town. But uh, this Google map location is called Muller Stige, I believe. Um, the location on Google Maps will take you to this long kind of um, uh, staircase. Um, and it's the best place for really beautiful rooftop views. So you can choose how high you want to go, but um, just don't forget to turn around because that's where the view is. Uh, you get to see all the different rooftops um, with the, the lake in the background. Then there's this church called this. I'm also not going to try to pronounce that, um, but it also has amazing lake views from its tower. You're also going to want to check out the marketplace. It's a great place to, to wander, lots of shops, cute restaurants and cafes. Um, so we actually did more wandering here in the afternoon uh, before our ferry ride back to Hallstatt train station. For lunch, uh, since we wanted to get closer to the um, gondola entrance for the Hallstatt Skywalk, which I'll talk about uh, right after this, um, we decided to eat lunch further out away from the main town center. And so we had a very simple lunch uh, at a place called Burgerman, the station. And the burgers and fries here were actually quite good. Uh, so I, I would definitely recommend if you're just looking for something quick and cheap, um, it's definitely not the best burger I've ever had, but uh, it, was, it was quite good. Price point was reasonable um, and the portions were great. So after lunch, we then went up to the Skywalk. Um, so here's what I'll say about this place. I think if it's not a sunny or clear day, I would actually recommend passing on this um, because the tickets are actually quite expensive. And uh, the day that we went, it was very, very cloudy. So we got to the top, couldn't see much. It was freezing. Um, and the line on the skywalk itself to take photos also gets really, really long. So be prepared to uh, kind of have to push and shove a bit. Um, but again, if it's cloudy and you can't see much, I, I personally don't think it's worth it. Unless you also want to see the salt mines, which I believe are up in the same area. So we, we obviously didn't go to um, do the salt mines this time. 
but that I think is a much uh, longer experience and it comes with a tour. Um, so since it's also up in the same place, I'd say if you're doing both, then um, it's, it's probably more worth going. Uh, but just keep in mind that the weather will play a very big factor in terms of uh, what you're able to see when you get up there. So those were the main highlights. Um, we hopped on the ferry to go back to the train station. I think we took the 5.07 p.m. train back. We had a slight mishap, so we ended up missing the train uh, and we were stuck at the Hallstatt train station for an extra hour. It's a very long story, but the area surrounding the train station is actually quite nice. Um, so we spent the hour taking a nice walk and we basically had the whole place to ourselves because most people don't miss the train. Um, so I think if you really wanted to, uh, instead of taking the ferry in, there is a route where you can basically walk around the lake and get into town from the other side. It'll uh, for sure take a while, but um, it is an option if you're uh, interested. Uh, but yeah, so that wraps up our day trip to Hallstatt. Um, hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks so much uh, again for watching.